Hi, and welcome to the Wisdom of Naomi, episode three. In the meantime, I want to remind you to make sure you subscribe to the channel. That way you are automatically notified when I upload a new video. Give me a thumbs up. And then also be sure to ask questions, make observations, leave a comment. I would love to engage with you post video. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day it is. I'm glad that you decided to join me for another video. I am your host, Tika, and again, my goal for this channel is for us to pray together, meditate together, support one another as we navigate life's challenges and remain faithful to God's word, especially in the meantime, while we're waiting for some life change to happen for us. Our three points for today are contentment, in the meantime, and lastly, joy and peace. As always, to prepare yourself, pour a glass of water, Get your coffee or your tea, light a candle, grab your journal or your Bible, whatever you may need to create a space to have this conversation with me. So let's just jump right in with our first point, contentment. Y'all, I am boring. <laughs> and I'm completely happy and content with that. I am a nerd, an introvert, a cat mom, a classic movie lover, and I'm talking about the old black and white movies from the 30s and 40s. I could go on, but I don't want to bore you. The point is, I'm happy with who I am. Going through the pandemic, you know, and, and we're still going through it, but going through the pandemic, it, it was a growth opportunity, right? It, it allowed me to begin to focus on things that are, are even more important than what I thought they were. Turning 50 was just a, a breath of new confidences and in a level of maturity. So again, I've reached a place where I'm happy and content with who I am. So my question to you, are you content? Are you happy with who you are at this very moment? If you are, shout it from the rooftops. Be sure to share it with your family and friends so that they can get to the level that you're at. It's so important for us to be happy with who we are. Because if we're not, if we're not happy and content, it can bring about stress and depression. And it just compounds on the other challenges that life can bring about. Now, being happy and content doesn't mean that we don't have goals, right? We should still strive for a level of improvement. We should still have goals to, to work towards. I'm sitting here today doing this video because I have goals. So being happy and content we should still strive towards our goals. It allows us to, when we're happy and content, it allows us to be kind to ourselves, to give ourselves grace, to not beat ourselves up. And that is so important. And that brings us to our first Bible passage, which is in Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. And this passage deals with God's provisions for us. Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Amen. Amen. This is a great reminder that life is ever changing. We're going to have humble times and prosperous times. We're going to have hills and valleys. God is asking us to be content in those changes that life brings about, right? Because again, when we are content and, and we're happy, we have a greater chance of not having all of those other stressors and precious, um, pressures compound on our life. So being content with where we are and, and who we are. Um, and you may be saying, Tika, I, I still have goals. And that brings us to our second point in the meantime. So what are, you, what are you doing in the meantime while you're saying, I am, you know, trying to buy my first house. I can't be happy until I buy that first house. I won't be content until I get a ring on my finger. 
I won't be happy and content until I get that promotion that I've been working four years for. Those goals will happen for you. But in the meantime, while you're waiting on those goals to happen, how are you living out that weight? So that brings us to our second Bible passage, Ecclesiastes 3, chapter, chapter 3, verse 1. There is an appointed time for everything, and there is a time for every event under heaven. Your appointed time is coming. My appointed time. Our appointed time is coming. I can't help but think of the stories of women who maybe they don't get married for the first time until their late 40s. And they have their first baby at age 48, 49, or 50. That was their appointed time. And can you imagine how they lived in their meantime? I imagine they fostered amazing friendships. They worked and advanced in their careers. They took fantastic vacations. They were living out their meantime, living life, waiting until that appointed time for them. It also reminds me of Sarah in the Bible who laughed at the angels when she, overhe when she overheard them tell Abraham that she would have a baby. And Sarah was way, way past childbearing years. I want to say like she was in her 90s. And if I have that age wrong, throw it in the comments and let me know. But she was past childbearing years when the angels told Abraham that she will be with child next year. That was her appointed time. Late, really late in life. We never know when our appointed time is coming. But we want to find a level of happiness and contentment in the meantime while we're waiting. Again, that allows us to just be kind to ourselves and to give ourselves some grace and not to beat ourselves up. And it, it allows us to be content with God's provisions. He's providing for us. And again, he's providing in those humble time and those prosperous times. So how are we, how are we living? So that brings us to our third and final point which is joy and peace. And I think that I shared in another video that I'm writing my memoir about my divorce and other life, uh, other life events. And as you can imagine, going through a divorce is extremely hard. And you may be asking, well, Tika, how did you go through that really hard time of your divorce to get to this point of happiness and contentment? And it goes back to living in the meantime, right? So one day I was at work and I, and I pulled up my, my PTO time and I had a ton of days, a ton of days to use off. And what am I going to do with this time? And I wanted to go on vacation. I didn't have anyone to go with. And I thought, all right, I'll book a trip by myself. I never, ever in a million years thought I would enjoy traveling on my own. But I found out that I love it. And I'm overdue for a solo trip. Hopefully in 2022, I can get a solo trip in. Living alone for the first time was scary. But once I got comfortable with it and began to appreciate the blessing of it, I embraced it. Y'all, let me tell you, I don't even have a laundry basket. I can carry my laundry to the laundry room in my arms. <laughs> And that's a level of joy and peace for me. That's a level of happiness and contentment for me. And you may think, okay, that's not anything that would make me happy and content, but it does me. Once I got to the level of appreciating my own company and enjoying my own company, I got to a, a great level of joy and peace, happiness and contentment. And Again, that's, that's just another goal. So that leads us to our third and final Bible passage on joy and peace. And this is in Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So believing in God, trusting in God, it gives us hope. That joy and peace comes in believing, believing in God, believing in his love for us, his sacrifice for us. And once I began to trust God in my meantime, I 
got to that joy and peace. I got to that happiness and contentment. Hmm. I love it. I love it. I thank you for joining me on another Wisdom of Naomi. And I pray that God keeps you and bless you until the next time we meet. Have a great day.